Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 9th. First off, this one was sent by... See, I think this was sent by Bob H. This is from Ars Technica. Or no, this is from Inverse.com Researchers. Our dumpster diving outside the Large Hadron Collider. Last month, Max Laborion, I think it is. Uh, short for probably Maxine, a professor of discard studies at Memorial University of Newfoundland, visited the European Organization for Nuclear Research, the CERN facility in Switzerland, to check out the world-famous Large Hadron Collider and go dumpster diving. What was she looking for? Tools, devices, detectors, wires, scrap metals. Um, the interesting thing that she found is that for some reason, people were not really bothered by dumpster diving outside the Large Hadron Collider. In fact, even some of the scientists were doing that themselves. I'll read you a little excerpt here, and, and uh, Liborian learned something surprising as well. The scientists who work at CERN had already picked through several dumpsters. At one point, she thought a facility worker was getting ready to tell her off. When he didn't, she realized he was simply waiting to look in the dumpster she was perusing. No one cares, she says, citing CERN's reputation for encouraging the development of open hardware. And that was amazingly refreshing. So in other words, they're not so paranoid like us over at the United States here, thinking that just because somebody's dumpster diving, they're up to no good or, you know, doing something wrong or something like that. They just figure it's a natural thing to do to actually go through and reuse things, repurpose things. It was, uh, um, it's it's kind of great and nice and refreshing and stuff like that. And she's a research scientist specifically is uh, about dumpster diving. I think one of the reasons why uh, Bob sent me this too is the original name of the group that my show was a part of was called the Dumpster Divers. I still keep the letters TDD in recognition of that group that I was a part of too. Uh, mostly artists and people way more talented than I am, but I was able to uh, start this show about 10 years ago and, and become a part of that group. But if you get a chance, check this out at inverse.com. Also got a link that I'm going to put up here too from KETV.com, Oklahoma, about the zoo director and the new elephants. Uh, basically, it boils down to, this is, oh, I think about maybe 11-minute video, something like that. Henry Dorley, zoo director, Dennis Pate, says the six elephants are settling into routines, and he talks about what the zoo staff has learned about them in the month they have been there. Also talks about some of the the things they do to enrich their uh, atmosphere and enrich their time, giving them, instead of just laying out food to give to them, uh, making it so that they have to explore for the food, dig around for the food, search for the food, um, things like that. Unfortunately, of the 18 elephants brought over, one of the elephants did pass away, but like I said last week, this was a rescue mission. These elephants probably wouldn't have lasted much longer if we didn't rescue them and bring them over to the United States and at least distributed them in the various social groups to the zoos. Uh, they probably wouldn't even be da uh, around as of, as of right now. This next one is from Metablast.com. She slices this bottle of Coca-Cola in half, but watch when she takes it to Chick-fil-A. This is... Uh, a chandelier this uh, girl is working on too and what she does is she takes these coke bottles glass coke bottles she specifically is a, a glass recycler she takes and cuts them in half lengthwise and then puts them inside this kiln and uh, it's a cool video to watch too not very long and she raises them almost to melting temperature and what happens is these they flatten out and they get a little bit wider and then the uh, bright red coloring on it kind of fades a little bit too and it gets more whitish but these bottles look really really cool and she glues them to a plate of glass with some type of special glass adhesive and then makes these panels and I'll put, I'll, uh, put a uh, picture of one of these panels she makes up here too what they look like but it's really really cool artwork so if you happen to be in a Chick-fil-A I don't know how many of the Chick-fil-A's are buying this or if they're in all the Chick-fil-A's the one near me is like clear in Schaumburg so I don't know if I get a chance to make it out there but uh, and I'm not really, I'll have to admit, I mean, nothing against Chick-fil-A. I'm not really a big fan of chicken sandwiches either, so uh, I'm not, it's not really very likely that I'll be to a Chick-fil-A anytime soon, but uh, maybe if I'm out in the Schaumburg area, I might stop in there and get a drink or something like that, even if they don't have a sandwich. I like just to check out the Coca-Cola artwork. I also have a friend on Facebook that once in a while sends me a Coca-Cola artwork too, and he also has been a contributor to the TDD report. That's kind of cool. And this next one is, this is the one from Ars Technica, and this was from, let me see, I want to give proper credit here too. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know exactly who. Um, maybe it's something, no, I think, I think maybe Tom sent this one too. I think this is from uh, Tom, Navy Thomas. Uh, 
TV maker Panasonic says it has developed the world's best weather model. And uh, they, they're they actually putting it up against the best of the best from uh, AccuWeather and uh, all the different um, weather facilities and stuff like that. But anyway, I'll, I'll just read a little bit of the article here. For a long time, weather forecasting was largely the domain of governments with the National Weather Service leading the way in the United States during the last two decades. However, the private weather forecasting industry, which includes well-known companies such as AccuWeather and many hundreds of smaller businesses, has grown up and is now estimated to be worth as much as $6 billion. Large multinational electronic company Panasonic now wants to crash the party. In an exclusive interview with ours, Neil Jacobs, the chief scientist of Panasonic Weather Systems, said the company has been running its own global model for several years on an 11,000 core supercomputer. And the PWS model, he said, was not only been outperforming the GFS model, but has become competitive with the gold standard ECMWF model. We started the global model development in 2008 and finally got to the point where we were outperforming ECMWF by late last year, Jacob said. There are various ways to measure model accuracy, but one of the most widely recognized is anomaly correlation at the 500 megabyte or mid-level of the atmosphere over a 30 degree average. Okay, I don't even half understand a lot of that that I saw, but maybe that I just said, but maybe some of your weather experts that even uh, know some of those abbreviations, but evidently what it is saying is that uh, the private company Panasonic can beat the best of what the uh, weather forecasts that are considered the big dogs right now are able to do. So good for you, Panasonic, and good for predicting the weather. I remember um, sometimes I'm kind of wondering if past about three days of weather forecasting, they're just rolling the dice. But I have noticed over the last 10 years, I think they actually are going out to four and five days and being at least fairly accurate. So. Um, has anybody else noticed that in weather forecasting too? Does it seem to you like they can actually go past three days and at least be better accuracy than flipping a coin? Uh, let me know what you think about that. It's, uh, there's quite a bit more in the article and everything like that if you get a chance to check it out. So, Thanks again everybody for contributing and uh, bringing the information as it makes my show much easier to work on when people send the kind of material they want to hear and it gives me material to work with too. So. That's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.